Hey, welcome. Today we're going to go over the most important strategy for how to quickly and efficiently solve physics problems that involve multiple forces. So I've taught physics for many years and if students just follow this strategy step by step by step and get in the habit of doing this, the vast majority of force-based problems are going to almost solve themselves if you start with following this one strategy and get in the habit of applying it. So I've drawn a very simple situation here where you have an object on a flat horizontal surface, there's an applied force, at some angle there is a force due to friction, there's a force due to gravity, and a normal force. This is a very common style of problem once you get into a forces unit. And so the first thing you're going to do is break any forces that are not completely in the x or the y axis into components by making the vector into the hypotenuse of a right triangle and then using some simple right triangle trigonometry using sine and cosine. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We are going to take this vector and make it into the hypotenuse of a right triangle here and solve for FAY and FAX. I'm going to quickly go through this part because hopefully at this stage of your training it's pretty straightforward to be able to solve for sine and cosine and this is how you would set this up. All right, and so there are your components. You've solved for the force applied in the x, force applied in the y. So we have broken this vector down into its components. We're going to use those components because we are going to add them together. And to add them, truly, they need to be completely in the same axis, like completely in the x or completely in the y. So let me show you how this works. For our second step, we're going to sum up the forces that are completely in that axis. Step C says write Newton's second law for that axis. And step D says set steps B and C equal to each other and look for things to make zero. So let's take a look. So literally the thing you're doing here is writing the sum of the forces and literally adding up the sum of all of the forces in that axis. Now notice I'm not writing FA here, I'm writing FAX because we have to use the vectors or the components of the vectors that are completely in that axis to get a valid answer. All right, and the next step is just going to be to write out the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration in that axis. That is Newton's second law. And so notice we've got the sum of the forces in the x is equal to something, and the sum of the forces in the x is equal to something else. What we're going to do is set those two things equal to each other, and you end up with this equation here. And that will help you get closer to your answer. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing in the y-axis. Let's take a look at that. So the y-axis in this case is a little more complex because we have the normal force involved too. So we're going to do the same strategy though and just say the sum of the forces in the y and literally add up the forces in the y-axis. Now, this is the case where you would have to make this negative, for instance, because it's in the negative direction. Just like I made my fk negative before, and then the next step is going to be to write out Newton's second law. The sum of the forces in the y is equal to mass times acceleration in the y. And then we set them equal to each other, and we see what pops out of this. Many times in problems like this, your acceleration in the y is going to be zero. That means that term drops out and becomes zero. And oftentimes your variable is going to be your normal force, because that's a reaction force that's dependent on everything else. So it happens as a dependent reaction to the other forces that are operating in the y-axis. So normally you don't have your normal force, and it's something you're going to be solving for. So this is the most important and crucial quick strategy to get to be able to solve physics problems with forces. I'm going to go ahead and give you a more complex example with some real numbers, and you should see that lesson pop up next in the playlist. So if you like this, or if you have any comments, please let me know down below. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.